you know, because we've been saved all our lives. That ain't none of us, we all been saved all our lives. Hallelujah. If you would get your Bibles out for me tonight. Glory to God and turn to James, the first chapter. You can be seated. Oh, go on into it, amen. Hallelujah. For those of you, as my dad, spiritual dad would say, for those of you who see a old, amen. Let me explain. That this is the general epistle of St. James. For those of you that are just so astounded by the word of God, let me just give you a background of the epistle of James. This is supposed to be written by James, the son of Alphaeus, the brother or kinsman of the Lord. It is also called the general epistle because written not to a particular person of church, but to all the converted Israelites. Hearing the apostles reprove the atonement spirit, which had even then infected many who had perverted the glorious doctrine of justification by the faith into the a particular occasion. He likewise comforts the true believers under their suffering and reminds them of the judgment that they were about to approach. That was the scripture. That was the background of the epistle of St. James. For those of you that would like to know, this is the foundation of what we're going to be going tonight, amen. amen. James 1, amen, starting at the first verse. It said, James, a servant of God, and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered aboard, greeting, amen. Yes. This was written to no one particular city or country, but to all the Jews generally being now dispersed. To all the believing Jews, whatever tribe they are from, dispersed throughout the whole world. Abroad means that it was not one particular city. It was all over like we have different cities and states and countries here. Back then in James' time, that was also different cities that he was beginning to approach and different things that was going on in his time and era. Yes, yes, yes. To read, and it says, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptation. Yes, yes. The word my brethren count means the first place of importance concerning comfort in your time of affliction. Yes, yes. In which we should not be cast down and be faint-hearted, but rather rejoice and be glad. Yes. Then he said he wants you to count it all joy. Yes. Glory to God. Count it all joy this meaning see their condition and this time was miserable because of the scattering abroad. He does well to begin as he does. The first argument that he was arguing was because of the faith is tried through afflictions, which ought to be most pure, for so it suits us. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we don't know how to deal with afflictions. Sometimes we don't know how to go through some things, Bishop, because we're not used to things happening to us. We want everything to be perfect from the time we get up, from the time we lay down, amen. But how many of you know that it's not going to be like that all the time, amen? That we have to go through some things, amen. And it's okay to go through some things. These folk here in this time was facing all kind of trials and tribulations. They were being afflicted on every end. Yes, yes. And so things have to break it down. And tell them it's okay. It's all right. Thursday, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Oh, glory to God, Jesus. The, oh, my God, Jesus. How many of you all don't mind if your patience is being tested, glory to God? Because patience right now in this particular era and now is a surpassing and most excellent virtue. Yes. It's brought about in us by this means, uh -huh. that by this your faith is tried, that is those various temptations. Now let me get something straight for a minute. We know that God does not tempt his people. He made us in his likeness and he made created us in his image. He does not tempt us, and so we're going to find this out later on through as we go on through the verses, but he will for a test and a trial on us. But he's not going to do anything that will get his children to fall beneath their Christianity. That's not his job. But he does have to sometimes see what we're going to stand at. Right. He wants to see if we're going to be able to withstand the test. Come on. And sometimes we can't withstand the test. Yeah. God can give us a 
something as small as taking a full little financial burst. And then we you hear we are falling out water and water is God. Yes, yes. Jesus, yes. my God, y'all come on and stick with me, glory to God. He said that if any uh -huh. of you lack wisdom, oh, let him ask of the most high God that give it to all men yes. literally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto you, glory yes. to God. If you lack that meaning is an answer to a private objection. Lack means an answer to a private objection in the word of God. It is easily said, but not easily done. He answers that need in this case, a different type of wisdom than the wisdom of a man to determine those things that are best for us. Since they are disagreeable to the flesh. You see, sometimes everything that God gives us, sometimes we don't always agree with our flesh, amen. But see, we were made of flesh, amen. But we also have to realize in whom we serve. Yes. But we shall easily obtain the gift of wisdom if we ask correctly. That is with a sure confidence in God. You got to have confidence in God. If you don't have confidence in God, don't look for no wisdom, amen. Who is eternally bountiful and liberal, glory to God. By wisdom, he means a knowledge of the doctrine previously mentioned in the text earlier. That is why we are afflicted by God and the fruit we reap from affliction, glory to God. People don't want to go through things these days, especially church folk. As soon as God go a test on them, they don't want to go through anything. They want to go to their fine automobiles and they find houses, but they don't want no trials to come along with that. I'm tired of this message. I'll pay them anyhow. Because even though I'm going through my time of affliction, even though I'm going through my trials, even though my tribulations seem like they're never going to suppress, I still got to preach them anyhow. Things are going to always go the way that I want to go. Some of you might be going through a hard time crying at night, laying in your bed. Nobody understands the pain that you feel. But just know that that's a trial that God is bringing you through. See, the enemy comes to tempt us so we can do things we have no business doing. But see, God said, when I give you a trial, or when I give you some afflictions to go through, when you come out of that trial, when you come out of that affliction, how many know that you're going to be ready to fight the fight? Glory to God. Come on and stick with me tonight. Glory to God. Oh, Jesus. She says, but let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Can you imagine the Lord breathing on the sea? You don't know which way to go because you're acting all up. He says, throwing you all over the place because you're not stable in your place, glory to God. Nothing wavering means not judging. Otherwise, having no doubt concerning the truth of these grand and fundamental principles, never supposing that God will permit him to ask in vain. When he acts sincerely and favorably, let him not hesitate. Let him not be here isolated. No man can believe too much of the Most High God. You can't believe that there's a problem too hard for God. When you start believing that and having doubt, you begin to wave glory to God. Then he says, like a wave of the sea, the man who is not thoroughly persuaded that if he asks of God, he shall receive of God. The reasonable of waves of the sea, he is in a state of continual agitation driven by the wind and the toss, now rising by hope with sinking into despair. We have to ask God and know because of God the faith that he gives us, we have to realize and know that God's going to bring us out of that situation. Now you believe that God's going to bring you out of your situation wave your hand. See, I can get you out of your situation. I can sit up here and preach till I'm blue in the face, but only you can change your situation. If you ask God to believe God, he's going to do just that for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Seven says, glory to God, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Oh my God, Jesus. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. The man whose mind is divided, who is not properly persuaded, either of his own wants or God's sufficiency, such persons may pray, but having no faith, they can't get no answer. Hallelujah. Did y'all y'all miss that then? Having no faith, you cannot get no answer from God. You must have faith in order to get an answer. James 1 and 8 says, a double-minded man. The 
is unstable in all of his ways. He's not going to shot that it will go fire, God. He said that in this meeting, is in all of his thoughts, in his deeds, he is unstable, Pastor. Glory to God. But the man of two souls has one for earth and another for heaven. Glory to God. So his wishes to secure both. 